Hi there everyone and welcome to this video. In uh, today's video we are going to be talking through um, consolidation and some of the different setup that you need to do when you are using Business Central to consolidate. Okay, so there are a few things that we need to talk about, but what I'm going to do first is just switch out of Business Central and I'm going to come into which I've used um, just to illustrate the setup of the um, companies that we're going to talk through. Okay, so um, you can see here I've got my um, consolidation company, which is the top level company here, and I've got subsidiary one and subsidiary two that feed into the consolidation company. So uh, obviously this is really important before we can go ahead and set up anything in Business Central. Uh, we need to have uh, an organizational structure like this um, that will tell us what we need to do. Um, so this is a really simple one. Obviously, you can get um, a lot more complex than this, um, but um, this is just to illustrate what we can do in BC here. Okay, so let me switch back to Business Central here and I am logged into one of my subsidiary companies here. So you can see I've got subsidiary 01 as the selected company right now. Um, and there's a little bit of setup that we need to do. Um, so if I come into my chart of accounts here, um, you see I've got um, a typical Cronus um, chart of accounts here in, uh, in this company here. And if I just jump into one of the accounts here on my general ledger, if I come down here to the consolidation tab, um, I can choose a consolidation debit account and a consolidation credit account in here, okay? So um, this is basically going to be the um, uh, in the consolidation routine, which um, account do debit entries from this account go to and which account do credit entries from this account go to within the consolidation company, okay? So we need to do that setup there. Um, and the other bit of setup here that you might need to do is um, if we are consolidating across um, sort of multiple currencies, uh, so if our subsidiaries use uh, multiple currencies um, within their general ledgers, that is, um, you can set um, different consolidation translation methods. So I'm not going to go through all of these here, but there are sort of general rules that you should use um, a particular translation method for income statement accounts, equity accounts, balance sheet accounts, and so on, right? Um, but obviously this, I guess, is one that you'd need to check with uh, with auditors and stuff just to make sure you're setting it up in uh, in the correct way. Okay, so that's generally the setup that we need to do on our chart of accounts. But if I come into dimensions up at the top here, um, there is also some config that I can do in here. So if I just add some fields in here, I don't have them in right now. I've got the consolidation code. Okay, so if we want to use dimensions within the consolidation routine, uh, we would need to put in the relevant consolidation code for each of the dimension values for each of the dimensions that we want to use within consolidation. Okay, so I'm not doing that for today, just keeping it nice and simple. I don't have any dimension um, dimension selected during the consolidation. Um, equally, my chart of accounts, I should say here as well, is um, not populated with regards to the consolidation debit account and credit account here because my chart of accounts is the same for all of my companies, right? And uh, I, I mean, in my past experience, when it's the same, we don't need to populate these two fields. If uh, if you guys think otherwise, please do, please do let me know. It'd be interesting to hear um, some other input on this. Okay, so let's say that's all of the setup done in our consolidate in our subsidiary. Sorry, and what we'll do now is we will jump through into our consolidation company. Okay, so let me just go into my settings. I'm going to drill down here and we were just in subsidiary one. We've got subsidiary two as well, but then I've got my consolidation company. And you notice, guys, I have got companies other than those involved within this consolidation. So that's totally fine, you know, to have companies in your business central environment that are not to be consolidated. Um, it's totally possible. Um, and we can even consolidate 
part of a company as well. So uh, I'll show you this in the consolidation company. I'm just going to jump in now. Um, and just whilst that loads up, um, what I should say, guys, that BC in the consolidation company, it will not um, consolidate things like subledgers, posted documents and so on. It's only the summarized general ledger entries that come through. OK, so uh, we will run through a consolidation later so you can see that. Um, but you don't get your sub ledger entry. So your customer ledger entries, posted sales invoices, purchase invoices and so on. They don't come through to the consolidation company, um, at least not out of the box. Um, it's just the GL entries. OK, so what we'll do first here in the consolidation company is let me just go to my business units. Um, so I've set up my two business units here for subsidiary one and subsidiary two. OK, so I can go into the card here and just talk very quickly through some of the setup here. So you've got your, your code and name. So I've tried to keep these, you know, um, um, sort of really unique here and uh, make it blatantly obvious which company we are um, consolidating there. So I've got subsidiary one as the code, subsidiary one as the name. Um, we can say the um, uh, currency code is different. Um, so if it's not blank here, um, we can assign a separate currency code to consolidate this subsidiary in. OK, um, and equally with that, you can choose um, to use the local or the business units currency exchange rate table. It's up to us. Um, and consolidate basically says, do we want to include this in the consolidation report or not? So it's just a, a boolean for that. You've got your consolidation percentage, uh, which can be anything up to 100%. So it just defines how much of um, those, those entries do we want to consolidate in our consolidation company. Um, so then we've got some date fields. I think these are used where the um, subsidiary has a different... Um, fiscal year to hours. Uh, so we can populate those if we need to. Um, and then we've got um, so the data source, which tells us is the data coming from the um, local currency within the subsidiary or is it coming from the additional reporting currency within the subsidiary? And uh, we've just got a last run date uh, tells us when the consolidation was run last. So that's a, a very quick overview there, guys. And I'm not going to run through each one of these, but um, we've got some uh, exchange rate gains and losses um, fields, which we can use. So you can just drop down here and select a value from your chart of accounts to um, nominate the account that you want to use for a particular um, um, exchange rate gain or loss um, scenario there. OK, so last little bit here on the um, subsidiary card, the business unit card is the default data import here. And you can either choose database or API. So in this example, um, we have a um, database and that's because um, the, the companies that we're consolidating are both in the same database or environment for, for Business Central. If they're in a different environment, I can go API here and you'll see what that does is it drops out and gives me the API's endpoint option here. OK, so um, you can go ahead and get that. I'll just change that back in a second. But if I jump back here and go to setup here on the business units page, it takes me to the consolidation setup where I can pick out my um, API that I need to give my other um, um, and partners that the consolidation company needs to have this API set up in um, from the subsidiaries. OK, um, and then I can also choose this Boolean to say enable this company as a subsidiary. And I guess um, that turns on or turns off as we mark this with some uh, some validation to say, can this data be pulled or not? Um, so, OK, let me just jump back here. I'm going to go into subsidiary 01 and I'm just going to change this back to database. And then when it's set to database, I can go in and choose my company name here. So company name here is selected as subsidiary 01, but this is just a list of the companies that I have in this environment. OK, so um, that's about it for the business units. The idea is, is you set up all the business units on the screen that you want to consolidate within this consolidation company. Um, 
Obviously, there are some other bits of setup that you may need to do within this consolidation company. So I'm talking there things like your chart of accounts, your dimensions would also need to be set up in here. Um, you know, and uh, so if you if you add a new chart of accounts to one of your subsidiaries, which you also want to flow through to your consolidation company or the other way around, you know, you can use master data management for things like that. But I guess it depends, you know, do we have the same? chart of accounts um, for all companies in the group or, or, or do we not um, and trust me life is a lot easier when you do um, so just a consideration there for when you're setting that up okay so what we'll go ahead and do now is uh, we will just run um, a test um, consolidation here and what I'm going to do in order to do this is just from our business unit screen I can go into sorry not consolidate I'm going to go actions functions and test database okay now what this will do when I say test database is I can enter a consolidation period so I'm just going to go sorry 0101 and let's go 0131 and if I hit preview on this what this is going to do is based on the setup in my consolidation company here it's going to give me a list of the accounts per subsidiary so subsidiary are one this list of accounts and if i scroll down to the next page subsidiary two and this list account of accounts so it's going to give me basically an idea of the accounts which are going to be included within the consolidation this is also a good check you know if there's an account missing from my consolidation company um, or, or some setup is missing here in terms of the chart of accounts um, or dimensions it will also give us a warning here right so you'll have a, a warning which we don't right now but it will tell you you need to add this account or, or this account is missing in the setup okay so you can also include dimensions in this test database check here but as we said for today I'm not using those now a few other things here you can also check the current consolidations in progress and um, you've got test file import file export file um, they were used in in sort of uh, the, the sort of older environments the import export file when um, you could have files generated from bc um, to import into your consolidation company um, so just a, a few things there to play with um, at your uh, at your leisure um, consolidations in progress here is basically just giving us an idea of what or any if any consolidation progress uh, consolidations are in progress right now um, okay so what we'll go ahead and do now is if we go ahead and run the consolidation so sorry what I'm going to do this time is go ahead and say consolidate um, and what I should do here is let me just show you the GL registers beforehand. So if I go into the archive, you can see the GL registers are um, blank. So there's nothing in there right now. It's a, it's a fresh company. So um, I can go in and enter the starting date and ending date. Document number probably make it something a little bit more meaningful than, than test, but I've just got a test in there for now. Um, and then you can assign a dimension in here if you want to consolidate with dimensions and also a parent currency code there if, uh, if you want to do that as well. So I press next and what it's going to do is it's going to give me a list of all of the subsidiaries or the business units that we want to consolidate. And this, I think, is just pulling setup from the business unit page. So you see I've got database set as the data import method, but I've also got an API option there. So I think it would just pull through to here all of the uh, business units which we are consolidating. Um, and I guess there's also with the API option, there's a, a grant access um, and sort of option here as well where we might need access to that. So uh, we won't do that in this particular video. I'm just doing the database one, but feel free to have a play with the API um, consolidation there as well. So what I'll go ahead and do is just say finish. Um, it asks me, do you want to consolidate in the period from 010124 to 310124? Let's say yes. And it's going to ask me that again. I think it's because it's the, the two subsidiaries. And what we then get is a message that says the consolidation has been successful. The current consolidation company has imported entries 
from the selected business units. So uh, it's now telling us that we can use the uh, report consolidated trial balance to view the consolidated entries. OK, so before we go ahead and do that, um, what I'm going to do is just search up here for GL registers and you'll see that we have uh, some entries in here now. So I'm the admin user. The source code here is consolidation and I can go in and review the general ledger entries attached to each of those consolidation runs. See, it's got my document number, a description, the amount and the date there as well. So the date's quite important, guys. It posts as the last date or the ending date of our consolidation period. And as I mentioned earlier, you only get summarized entries, you know, in this case per month, because that's what we consolidated by. Um, but you can run uh, the, the lowest level you can run consolidation by is a, is a day, right? But I don't think, I mean, you wouldn't normally do that. You'd normally do it for a month and uh, to get the, the GL detail, you can go into your subsidiaries. And just for peace of mind here, if I go into customer ledger entries from my GL registers, you'll see there's there's nothing in there right now. OK, so you only get your GL entries. And now if I go into my chart of accounts, um, I should be able to see some transactions in there, some numbers in there. Um, and if I drill into my general ledger entries there, I don't have the field added in. Um, but if I search for business units on a Zoom here, there you go. And so I've got business unit code subsidiary 02 and subsidiary 01, right? So you can add that field in. I'm just using the uh, customized profiles now. Um, if you want to view that information on your general ledger, entry screen and uh, also I can go in and filter totals by business unit and I can pick the business unit that I want to filter my entries by okay and so the, the numbers are the same there because I've just copied company and then uh, then uh, use them for consolidation makes life easier you know we've got the same chart of accounts and so on um, so a few of the bits here, what I'll do is just quickly run the consolidated trial balance. Uh, there are other reports here, guys, but um, just have a play um, and see what you think. Um, but I'm just going to run this one to show you what it looks like. Um, so once that's generated, if I zoom in here, you'll see I've got my chart of accounts, my general ledger with entries broken down by subsidiary right so i've got subsidiary or one subsidiary or two and then the total for my gl code 10110 right and uh, as i said the numbers there are the same just because i copied my cronus company to make my two subsidiaries just to make life easier um so that is the consolidated trial balance one other thing that I want to show you is the, um, the eliminating uh, entries function, so eliminations. Now, um, I know some systems might do this in different ways, um, but the way that we would do this in Business Central typically is you would input on a general journal your elimination entries, right? So you can just populate the journal. Doesn't do that automatically, you would need to do that. So you would need to tell BC what entries you want to eliminate. Um, and then we have a report that we can run if I just search up here, GL consolidation eliminations. And what this does is it tells me, okay, what consolidation period are we working in? What business unit code are we working in? And then we've got a journal template and batch, which is the journal template and batch that we populated the lines on. Um, so yeah, that's about the extent to which we can do eliminations in BC. Um, and that guys is everything I wanted to show you. Okay, so um, I hope that was useful, um, feel free to have a play. Obviously I would do this in a test environment first before going anywhere else. Um, I hope it was helpful, I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, do reach out. Thanks for watching.